Ciao everyone, welcome back to another tutorial on Climate Studio. We will be focusing on the energy use intensity of buildings. This tutorial is broken up into three parts. We will be looking into how to transform your architectural 3D model into a thermal massing model, selecting the climate zone, the weather file and the project use, then also defining the zones, windows, shading elements and ground boundaries. And lastly, adjusting some of the settings before running the baseline and then later on all of the upgrades. So the first thing you want to do is reduce your architectural 3D model, which is very detailed, into a thermal model. This you can achieve by looking at your floor plan layout and changing that into core and perimeter zones. First, you have the core zones in red, the perimeter zones in pink, the windows in dark blue, and all of the other shading elements in gray. It is important to keep in mind that if you have any curved surfaces or windows, you need to change them into angular ones in order to run the simulation afterwards. And when you're done, Dividing the floor into these individual categories, you can now continue with all of the other floors and do the same thing. Make sure to check that all of the zones below the top floor are in contact with each other or else the simulation might assume that it's not a ceiling but rather a roof and that would falsify the simulation results. Before you can specify the individual zones, you need to know the climate zone where your project is located in. This project here is in climate zone 4B and the project use is a medium sized office. Now you can go ahead and select all of the zones and allocate a template according to the project use and the climate zone. and make sure that the correct weather file is selected according to the location of your project. The windows are pretty simple. You need to create window surfaces and just keep in mind also here, change curved window surfaces into angular ones, and then you can add them to the list as well. As soon as you add the windows to the overall list, the corresponding zones will recognize the windows that are in contact with one of the sides of the zones and this will result in the windows being added as a subfolder to the specific zone. It sometimes can happen that some of the windows are not recognizable and this will show up in the invalid objects tab. You can select the window and then see where it's located and mostly it's because of either the window is not in contact with the surface or for example that it's overlapping with two zones. Now that you finished all of the window surfaces, you want to focus on all of the shading elements, which either could be extended floor slabs or fixed shading elements in front of the facade. And what you see here is the finished state. And the last element, which is very important, is to create ground boundaries to all of the zones that touch the ground. The reason for that is if you don't allocate that surface, your EUI result will significantly change because the simulation assumes that that zone at the very bottom, which is actually touching the ground, is now free floating, which will then result in a higher heating load. Before you can run the simulation, you need to check some of the zone settings. You click on the edit button on the side. If you stay on the loads tab, you can see there's one section called people, people density. That density is still set as a default and you want to change that according to the project size, but also the amount of employees or people who will be working or living in your building. And just to double check all of the schedules that you can see here in the loads tab, but then also in the conditioning and the envelope tab that follow, they need to be set according to the climate zone that you selected before and also the project type. But normally this should be set already. So yeah, you're pretty much set. You can press play and run the simulation and this will give you the baseline, which will be important when comparing it with all of the upgrades that follow. 
So I guess I'll see you in part two if you want to know more about how some of these upgrades that will follow can reduce the EUI overall.